Hi, this is Maria Williams. I'm so glad you're here today. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made these cards, um, specifically the one on the right. The one on the left is the first one I made. I've already sent it to my brother-in-law. He actually got it on time this year. The stamp set I use for these cards is the Birthday Wit stamp set, which is kind of fun um, for all kinds of birthday cards. And the paper pack that I'm using is the Picture Perfect Party 6x6 pack. So um, this pack has a lot of papers that are pictures and um, then on the backs you have patterns with um, coordinating colors. I actually used all the coordinating colors which are Bermuda Bay, Berry Burst, Lemon Lime Twist, Peekaboo Peach, and Pool Party besides black and white. I used Berry Burst only on the first card. On the second one I used black instead. This is the pattern paper that I chose for my card with some black cards talk and the sentiments that I'm going to be using for the card are this tall one um, on the left here and then for the inside of the original card I stamped this sentiment and cut out the happy birthday but for the uh, second card I just used the happy birthday. I don't have 12 by 12 basic black card stock so I'm using a piece of 8.5 by 11 piece of cardstock. For my original card I just used a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock and I cut at five and a half inches so when I scored my card at four and eight inches I ended up with a card that was four inches wide by five and a half inches tall. So I'm going to grab my paper trimmer and I'm going to take my eight and a half by eleven piece of cardstock and cut it in half at five and a half inches. Now I could have trimmed my piece of cardstock to eight inches instead of eight and a half, but um, I ended up cutting it in half first and then I scored both pieces at four inches and then folded them in half and put them back in my paper trimmer and cut off the additional half inch. Then I grabbed some fast fuse and put it on the inside of one of the two cards and then I took the other card and just laid the left panel of that card on top of the right side panel of the first card. When you're doing the card base this way uh, you could make it a full four and a quarter inches by five and a half so that it would be a standard card size but because you're essentially putting two cards together, it gets a little bit bulky and you may have a little trouble getting it into a standard size envelope. I like to use a quilting ruler when I have to measure something on my cards because it helps me to keep everything square. So I'm just lining up to one edge of my card and making sure that I have it lined up at three quarters of an inch and that's going to be my border all the way around. When I measured this, I did do the long sides first and then I did the shorter sides, but there's no reason why you can't do adjacent sides. I don't know that there's really an advantage to doing it the way I did it. It was just my preference. When your card base is a lighter color, you really don't need to do this. Um, if you're comfortable with just putting it into your trimmer and lining up to the three quarter inch measurement, you can just do it that way. But because this is um, black cardstock, when I put it into my paper trimmer, I really can't see the lines that go down on the um, clear ruler that folds over the paper to hold it in place. So um, I need some marks and if I only do dots, I won't be able to see them underneath the blade. Hopefully this will make more sense when you see the card base in the trimmer. So I'm taking my card base and lining it up to the three quarter inch measurement on the horizontal ruler at the top of my paper trimmer. And then as you can see when I put the blade down you wouldn't be able to see the corner and you also wouldn't be able to see where you needed to stop or start that cut because the numbers are black. So with this full line you can see exactly where you need to trim. As I'm trimming this square out of the middle of the front panel of the card base, you may see that there are some other lines on another one of the panels of the card base. Please ignore this. I was trying to keep an eye on a tennis match at the time that I was videotaping this, so um, it didn't quite turn out right, so I had to redo it. But that area with the um, faulty lines is going to get covered with designer series paper, so no big deal. 
Now that I have the entire rectangle cut out, I'm seeing that I have a little bit of uh, the gel pen remaining on the edges of the rectangle because I didn't quite cut it far enough. Um, part of this is because I have the camera set up right above my paper trimmer so I can't really put my head over it. So I've discovered this um, eraser that is a sand eraser and I, I don't know if I've mentioned it in one of my previous videos, but this is a lifesaver. It just kind of sands the paper just enough that if you have a little bit of ink on there, it'll take it right off. So if you get a smudge on a card after you've finished it or something like that, you can just very gently um, go over it with a sand eraser and it'll take the ink mark off. I'm trimming the designer series paper that I picked to four inches by five and a half inches. And then I'm just going to use some fast views to attach it to the panel of the car that is going to be seen right behind my window. I like to align my paper to the outer edge of the car just because it is easier to see. And then I just make sure that an adjacent side is also lined up and then I press the paper down. I've already cut a piece of the Confetti Designer Series paper just a little bit smaller than the card front. And I also cut the inside window a little bit larger, an eighth of an inch larger than my card base window. I'll have all the measurements on my blog. I'm attaching this to the card base with fast views as well. It's funny the things that you don't think about until you watch the video. And I noticed that at this point, I could have sandwiched the acetate in between the frame and the card base. Um, the way I did it doesn't look too unsightly on the inside, but this is definitely an option. Moving on to the stamping. I used my um, stamp positioner tool because I was stamping this multiple times in different colors and also because there's a lot of surface area and sometimes it's hard to get a good impression. So that way I can stamp it once and if I don't get a great impression, I can just stamp it again. I had already stamped it in all the different colors for the original card that I made and you saw how I had cut out some of the pieces already. So now I'm going to stamp the um, sentiment in um, not Bursa Mark ink, Memento Black ink, couldn't think of it. And as you'll see, the inside didn't stamp very well, but it doesn't really matter because all of that is going to be covered up. I decided to go ahead and cut out the sentiment before I put all the different colors on it. And I used a combination of scissors and a craft knife. If you're a great fussy cutter, you could just use the scissors for the whole thing, or you could actually use the craft knife for the whole thing. But I decided to make parallel cuts in between the words with the scissors, and then use a craft knife and a mat to cut in between those lines. In my previous video, which was the mermaid cards, I tried to use adhesive sheet on die cuts after I had already cut them out. And it didn't work great because I had a lot of the adhesive um, hanging off the edges. So this time what I decided to do was to apply my sentiment to the adhesive sheet and then take a scrap of paper and rub it all over the um, adhesive sheet and the sentiment and use a scoring tool to kind of burnish all the way around the sentiment. And then when I pulled off the scrap piece of paper, it pulled up, pulled up all that up. I can't get it out pulled up all that adhesive that was around the sentiment. So I got a much cleaner edge this time. To finish off the sentiment part of the card, all I have to do now is take all my um, colored uh, stamped sentiments and trim out uh, one, two words out of each one, and then just adhere them to the base sentiment, the black one, with some multi-purpose glue. The colors I used for the sentiment were Pool Party, Bermuda Bay, Lemon Lime Twist, and Peekaboo Peach. On the original card I used Berry Burst, but since I was using a black card base, I thought that I would um, incorporate the black into the sentiment. I cut my piece of acetate one eighth of an inch smaller on each side than the card base, so it's four and, no sorry, three and seven eighths by five and three eighths, and I'm attaching it to the inside of the card with some fast views. 
and I'm trying to apply the fast fuse in full strips so that it looks a little bit better when um, I apply the acetate and you can see the fast fuse through it. To finish the front of the card all I have to do now is apply my sentiment so I just peel off the backer off of the adhesive sheet and I am going to use tweezers because I really want to make sure that my sentiment ends up in the center of the window. So I'm just holding it with some tweezers and getting it placed just right and then just pressing it down. Here's a close-up of the inside of the card and if that bothers you, you could cut another frame like the one on the front of the card and put it on the inside of the card or as I mentioned earlier, sandwich the acetate in between the two layers on the front of the card. To finish off the card, I've cut a panel of Whisper White cardstock to three and three quarters by five and a quarter inches. And I'm going to stamp the happy birthday sentiment on, on it in Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. So I'm using my stamp on the jig to make sure that I get perfect placement. If it were a photopolymer stamp, I would probably just go for it. But since I can't quite see where the sentiment is on the rubber stamp, I'm going to use the stamp on the jig. I do line up my cardstock with my grid paper. Um, it does help me visually to make sure that my sentiment is straight. And then I just place my um, clear sheet onto the cardstock, line up my stamp on the jig, and stamp it in place. To add a little more color to the inside of the card, I'm stamping this uh, kind of starburst image from the stamp set, and I'm stamping it in three different colors. I'm using Lemon Lime Twist, Peekaboo Peach, and Bermuda Bay. In between colors, I'm just using my chamois. You can find these at Walmart in the automotive section, and they sell them in really large sheets because they're meant to um, be used to clean cars, and then cut them down to size, and they really are great. You just keep them moist, and then you can use them to clean your stamps. And um, anyway, so I've stamped the Lemon Lime Twist and cleaned off my stamp and use Peekaboo Peach, and then I'm cleaning it again, and we're gonna use the Bermuda Bay. You could use um, snail adhesive to attach this uh, white panel to the inside of the card, but I'm using Fast Fuse. I just love knowing that nothing is going to come undone. This stuff is really strong. So I'm just lining up my panel with the inside of the card and pressing it in. And that completes my card. I did toy with the idea of adding a couple of balloons to the front of the card and I got some Bermuda Bay cardstock and the balloon punch and punched out some balloons and kind of lined them up and in the end I just didn't like it. I liked the card just the way it was. What do you think? Should I have added the balloons? Let me know in the comments if you have an opinion one way or another. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you next time. For all the product links and for additional pictures, please visit the blog post at mariascards and more.